Uh, antes de mais, desejar as boas-vindas, uh, desejar as boas-vindas aqui aos meus colegas que estão aqui presentes também, ao Luís Campos, que é o nosso representante uh, da nossa equipa junto da Comissão Europeia, e ao Milos Mamot, que é o representante da DG Brof, dentro da Comissão Europeia. Nós vamos aqui falar sobre um assunto que é de veras importante, do qual nós também temos aqui algumas dificuldades em, em perceber. Uh, foi nos pedido uh, para nós fazermos esta apresentação, portanto, aqui a assegurar. Uh, no fundo, e para dar aqui um breve brinco, Quadramento. Aquilo que pretendemos e que temos vindo a fazer ao longo do tempo uh, na área do turismo tem sido um foco, desde pelo menos 2016, tem, tem sido um foco essencial e grande na questão dos apoios dirigidos à questão da sustentabilidade e da digitalização. São necessidades essenciais, permanentes que nós temos para do, do, do turismo. Necessitamos que esse trabalho seja feito de uma forma mais rápida possível de forma que possamos garantir a sustentabilidade deste setor ao longo do tempo, no próprio plano estratégico que nós fizemos em 2016, para até 2027, esses objetivos estão bem explícitos, não, objetivos que são ligados à questão ambiental, social e económica. Então, neste, desde esta altura e que entrou o novo quadro, nós temos vindo a desenvolver um, um número grande de instrumentos, todos eles cada vez mais, digamos, exigentes, naquilo que é uh, o seu acesso, nomeadamente questões que tenham que estar ligadas a, a, aos indicadores de, da sustentabilidade, mas também uh, fazendo avisos mais específicos e próprios para áreas que nós achamos que têm de ser desenvolvidas, nomeadamente a área do digital, para nós é importantíssimo. Eu li alguns uh, numa entrevista dada pela pessoa da, 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 aqui da UE, que dizia que metade dos negócios do turismo não estão presentes na net, nós, isto é, não estando lá, é, é como se não existissem. Portanto, há aqui um esforço grande nosso de fazer aqui instrumentos que dedicados à questão da digitalização, mas, mas agora também muito ligado à questão da, da, da sustentabilidade. Quando nós falamos nos instrumentos que nós temos na gíria, nós dizemos que os nossos instrumentos, quer do 2020, quer todos os, os instrumentos de crédito que nós temos disponíveis, estão muito ligados, estão dimensionados numa linguagem futebolística, é como se fosse a, temos ali a Europa, os montantes envolvidos são relevantes, mas existe um outro mundo que nós não temos acesso, ou que nós conhecemos ainda pouco. No fundo, a gente chama a Liga dos Campeões, que é os dinheiros que existem e que a própria Comissão Europeia que tem disponíveis. Uh, nesse sentido, hoje é importante nós percebemos o que é que existe disponível. Uh, a própria web fez um guia online para explicar a questão dos próprios acessos, os instrumentos disponíveis para cada área, quais são os serviços que estão abertos, e por isso nós pedimos, uh, digamos assim, a, a um representante que pudesse fazer esta apresentação e explicar-nos a nós, a, que, a, a quem está presente, já são mais de 100 pessoas, para que possam perceber como é que o guia, como é que o guia funciona e quais são os fundos que estão disponíveis. Um, dúvidas, nós vamos depois ter que no fim uh, desta apresentação, que deve durar cerca de uma hora, vamos ter aqui um Q&A, o Q&A será feito no chat, Uh, pode ser feito em inglês e português. Uh, nós depois vamos tentar, no final, responder, sempre em inglês, às dúvidas que são colocadas e depois, no fim, haverá a ação de encerramento. Okay? Dúvidas que tenham, etc., podem sempre também colocar na parte do chat. Milos, I think that I will that I'll read the, all the introductions, so I think that the floor is yours. Please. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Portugal. Um, I'll straight away start sharing my slides. I just prepared a few of them, not too many, not to bore you. Um, I trust that the slides are now seen, right? Good. Um, so I allowed myself to go a little bit broader than what I was asked, because I was asked to present mostly the guide on EU finding for tourists, an online guide that we released uh, in the mid of last year and we updated um, uh, in uh, December uh, last year and uh, we keep it um, uh, maintain updated 
regularly with the information that we gathering on different EU programs. Um, uh, but I would like to go a little bit broader and tell you also about some perhaps other interesting um, uh, initiatives uh, to support uh, tourist SMEs, not only tourist SMEs, but sometimes also broader. Um, and also to tell you a little bit more about um, some of the online uh, tools that may be helpful um, uh, when you are preparing specific projects, when you are looking for advice, and, and also when you're trying to look for partners. Um, uh, nevertheless, I'll try to be as concise as uh, possible so that uh, we have um, uh, plenty of time for questions and then you will be able to ask me in, uh, questions regarding my presentation, but also things that perhaps you do not see on slides or the website that I will show you. So, uh, first of all, for tourism, and as we see EU tourist policy, we see tourism ecosystem a bit broader than what the, um, uh, uh, Eurostat, um, how the Eurostat perceives. So we go beyond the traditional um, uh, NACE codes uh, for tourism. Uh, we uh, we see tourist ecosystem. We define it as as uh, as businesses in hospitality, transport, tourist travel operators, accommodation providers. So it's like uh, rather a broad scope of economic activities, um, and therefore uh, different different uh, different actors uh, that um, that are involved and different projects and type of project and type of interventions, type of investments that um, that um, uh, that economic operators, but also destinations may want to do under the umbrella of uh, tourist investment. Um, uh, hence, it's not uh, really uh, surprising that there are several uh, of EU programs that are we consider relevant for tourism. Um, uh, some of the EU programs and you have on the right hand side, you have a little table summarizing um, uh, what uh, we identified as EU support programs that are financing support programs that are relevant for uh, financing tourism uh, objectives. Um, now, uh, some of them are relevant for more for very specific activities, like for example, transportation. Um, some of them go broader and for example, support um, uh, SMEs, irrespective of whether this is core tourism or this is, this is something uh, broader. Uh, now, uh, the table on the right hand side, um, it summarizes um, different programs that are there also tell you how big the program is and uh, from a simple math one can see that there's more than 1.3 uh, 1.4 trillion of euros in those eu programs for the seven years or between 2021 2027 now this 1.4 trillion is the amount allocated to those programs um, but there is no requesting for tourists, so there is no money specifically assigned to tourists. Uh, how much tourism and different projects and different objectives um, of tourists will benefit from uh, these uh, programs in the end will depend on uh, the demand coming from the project promoters. Uh, of course, there will be different calls, of course, there will be different forms of programming, but ultimately, um, uh, the share going to tourists will be determined by the demand from uh, from uh, tourism uh, business operators, destinations, and and uh, other stakeholders. Um, we realize that this is uh, not uh, simple to know all about all those programs, and that's why, uh, like in the previous financing perspective, so like uh, in the um, uh, in the 2014-2020. Um, uh, uh, budgetary period, uh, we came up with a guide to EU funding to help um, uh, tourist stakeholders navigate between different programs. Now, the objective of this guide, now it is online, previously it was a PDF document that was uh, available um, in the internet. Uh, we kind of mimicked the, uh, the document that we had uh, in the previous financial perspective uh, with a more user-friendly application with specifically the objective to give different types of, uh, of uh, actors possibility to filter and uh, find uh, those programs that may be potentially relevant to the projects, to the investment that they would like to pursue in the area of tourism. Now, I will go to uh, this, uh, this online tool, I will zoom into in a, in a few minutes, so we'll go online and uh, we will try to 
um, do some exercise with uh, this uh, guide for funding. Uh, but before doing that, let me zoom in a bit on a program that, uh, unlike several other EU funding program, is not shared management, which means that it's not a program that is um, that the budgets are um, transferred to the member state uh, with their national envelopes, but it's centrally managed. So it's from Brussels um, and DigiGrow, uh, so my um, Directorate General, um, manages part of um, of this program that is very relevant for tourists. We call it this SME component. Um, for the next seven years, there's one billion euros um, uh, in this component. And indeed, uh, we uh, do quite a lot uh, tourism relevant investments. We support quite a lot of tourism relevant investment with this with this component. Um, it is building on what some of you might uh, might uh, know from the previous financial perspective as COSME, so support to SMEs. Now this COSME is integrated in the broader program uh, called uh, Single Market Program. Uh, but nevertheless, um, uh, the the logic of of the COSME program um, continues. So just just uh, a few information on what we uh, what we were supporting under COSME. Um, so far, so until 2020, uh, um, you may see um, uh, this is quite detailed presentation of what types of intervention there were, uh, but in particular there were specific calls for proposal, but also some procurement um, uh, leading to creation of new transnational tourist partnerships across uh, borders. Uh, there were programs uh, and initiatives um, on capacity building support to SMEs. Um, in particular, to uh, expand and adapt um, their business um, uh, through diversification of their offer, to improve the processes. Uh, some of the budget was also spent on uh, raising visibility of tourist destination in Europe and uh, of Europe as a destination altogether on international markets. Here we have a cooperation with the European uh, Travel Commission um, that does so-called Destination Europe. Um, uh, promotion campaign uh, to the um, uh, most strategic third markets and also some of that uh, money went uh, through procurement mostly to building economic uh, social economic evidence so basically working on the data that was then made as a public data on on trends on uh, on uh, on uh, tourist statistics and some economic facts um, and and studies that are helpful to them to the community of uh, of tourists including businesses for um, what happens uh, in under the single market program now uh, what types of activities uh, we are supporting this is a snapshot of uh, what was program what is program for 2021 here i would like to highlight one call for proposal uh, so uh, it's a grant call um, uh, that uh, that uh, recently closed, and now the projects are being um, uh, selected. They will be they will be um, recruiting SMEs soon in order to um, uh, to work with them and improve their capacity to, in particular, uh, run the green and digital transition. Uh, is the call of uh, a bit more than 12 million. Uh, we we link it with the COVID-19 recovery, but altogether it's support to SMEs. And similar call but a bit bigger will be still launched this year it will be shortly after the summer we plan it together with ASMEA, our executive agency and um, again it will be on empowering smes to carry out the twin transition digital and green transition improving resilience of businesses um, uh, these calls are normally structured that um, that um, those are addressed specific consortia, including um, uh, national destination management organization, some uh, vocational training um, uh, organizations, academia, uh, but also um, uh, consultancy and uh, in some cases, for instance, uh, statistical offices. Uh, but altogether, um, uh, organisms that can advise, can help uh, tourist businesses with improving something, improving, for example, um, uh, resilience or improving uh, sustainability performance, guiding them on something. So uh, the consortia are awarded uh, with a subsidy, with a grant, and then the consortia, they recruit uh, a number of SMEs uh, throughout different countries in order to work with those SMEs on some specific 
um, uh, some specific um, improvements. Uh, this call again, it will be launched uh, after this summer. Uh, uh, we 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 expect some eighteen twenty projects, so eighteen twenty consortia are being recruited, um, and and with that, uh, each of the consortia reaching at least some eighty eighty one hundred uh, SMEs. Um, uh, yes, uh, we hope that um, uh, there will be enough uh, enough. Um, uh, of the SMEs working together to build some evidence to also build some best practices that can be shared later. Let me just. OK, we will uh, now I will uh, now go online and we'll uh, zoom specifically on the guide to EU funding. Uh, but before doing that, uh, let me just um, uh, show you on this slide. Um, uh, there are the, the, the existing online tools and the websites of uh, of uh, the European Commission, but also other institution uh, institutions that may be helpful um, uh, when you're trying to prepare projects, when you're trying to look for financing to your projects and your initiatives. Um, and I will uh, later on open each of those pages so that I can uh, explain a little bit uh, the logic of each of those websites or, or tools uh, in practice. Um, uh, this presentation, I trust, will be shared with you. Uh, I haven't sent it yet, but it will be shared with you with all the links, and so you will be able to uh, go through it uh, later as well and maintain the links. Um, uh, let me let me let me let me switch the, uh, the the screen now and i will go to the first on the list so the guide to eu funding let's play a little bit with this application uh, just bear with me i will just switch to another web another screen Uh, I trust you can see a browser now, right? Excellent. So this is the guide to EU funding. It's an on, up, on online application on our website of the Commission website Europa. Uh, EU. Now, what we try to do with this uh, website is to uh, to uh, give. Uh, First of all, to do a, a little bit of an introduction, um, uh, more general about uh, about the available available funding um, to, uh, to to tourist sector. Um, there's small introduction on how to use this guide, and, and also some, some information about possible sources of technical assistance when preparing the the project, but also when looking for partners. Uh, so basically, similar information that I included for you on the slides. Now, uh, you may see here a section called in the spotlight, which is which is what we added very, very recently. And this is in responding to the uh, to the request from uh, some of the users telling, OK, um, it's nice to have a repository to, to guide us to different website where to find the information about specific funding program further. But it would be also helpful if you commission provided us with the links to specific calls that are relevant for tourists that are already ongoing under different programs and uh, and uh, in order to to answer this um, uh, this um, uh, this uh, request uh, we introduce now this in the spotlight um, uh, list of open calls under different programs that will be uh, regularly every one week every two weeks updating with the information that we collect from um, uh, from um, other colleagues running the calls under different programs so uh, those links will be on the on the on the landing page of the of the of the funding guide and of course uh, you will be able to access those when going through different uh, to different websites specific for the uh, funding programs now uh, in order to facilitate everyone live, uh, we we're not only listing the programs, but we also allow for some filtering. It's a very basic, uh, very basic setup. But here we can uh, say uh, what sort of objectives do I want to achieve? Broad objective with my project. Uh, I don't know. Let's take uh, digitalization of tourism. Um, and then also the interface allows to select what type of organization I am. So, OK, um, that may be different programs uh, relevant for if I'm a researcher, different program 
if I'm a destination or different program if uh, if if I'm uh, coming from a uh, public authorities or uh, small medium sized enterprises I believe this is the most relevant for us today so let's let's uh, look at this one and then also possibility to select what type of funding I'm mostly in uh, interested here uh, we make a distinction between grants or subsidies, so non-reimbursable financing from the, from uh, the EU budget, and also financing, so uh, something that is reimbursable, um, loans, um, uh, guarantees. Um, uh, we also introduce um, uh, a third category, technical assistance. Again, that will um, uh, click in this one. It will guide you to the different technical assistance uh, tools that are there. But let's take the um, uh, subsidy side. Sorry. And let's search. Normally, I think I have a problem with the website. <laughs> Let me reboot. Smart Digital and SMEs and grant subsidies. Ah, voila. Now, the website limits now um, the out of 17 choices initially available. Now you have uh, 10 programs listed as possibly relevant for your objective of, uh, of uh, supporting projects in smart and digital tourism, um, considering that you are an SME and you want a subsidy. Now, going to the, clicking on a, on a, on a link to the, website to them uh, to the program itself one can learn more about the program i explained for instance the single market program i zoomed in zoom in on this one um uh, it include it uh, the information provided explains the logic of the program explains the eligibility uh, gives further detail on the program and then gives sense the the, uh, the person that would like to get more information to program specific website where normally one should access information on all the ongoing calls and also um, the another website which is a um, horizontal um, uh, commission website on all the funding and then their opportunities we will go to this website in a second uh, and also to another website that allows you uh, to check more um, uh, more easily um, the calls for proposals that are under the program. On top of that, what we did, we include some examples of the project that were supported with the predecessor of, uh, of a single market program, in this case, COSME program. Again, this is something for inspiration and seeing, okay, what type of projects we're really talking about, what type of interventions. Now, uh, I mentioned um, uh, the uh, the portal that shows you all funding and tendering opportunities. Let's go to this portal now. This is a repository of all the uh, all the um, uh, tender ongoing, open, and uh, also recently closed tendering procedures and uh, grant procedures uh, by the EU institutions. Now again, you have uh, filtering possibilities. This is very helpful because it will link you. It will uh, get you beyond a specific program uh, by uh, by introducing uh, the keywords that you are interested in. Okay, let's let's use tourism to see how many initiatives we have uh, ongoing. Uh, do we want tenders and grants? Now let's just do grants. You can of course select specific program uh, if you already know under which program you 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 are the most um, likely to uh, to uh, to seek financing by using by using of course filtering you will narrow down the narrow down the uh, the list of searches okay something when sorry. 
Okay, so out of ongoing uh, calls open for submission might be no. Those are forthcoming also and some of the uh, closed calls. You see that there are several initiatives, several calls that are relevant for um, uh, for the area of tourism. Now ongoing under different programs. Okay, part of that is COSME. So there are um, uh, calls for SMEs involvement uh, under one of the um, uh, COSME pro uh, so one of the um, uh, COSME call for proposal that I am um, uh, presented to you in the uh, table with um, uh, with the repository of action of COSME. But uh, and there are also um, uh, initiatives you can see that they're under the Horizon Europe initiative, something that is potentially relevant for tourists. There's something on Erasmus Plus, Creative Europe, and so on. So this is useful to check from time to time. Okay, we normally trying to then uh, we will be trying to bring in those um, those call link those calls on on our um, uh, EU um, uh, funding for tourist portal. But in any case, the um, the, um, the complete information, but also including um, uh, tenders, so something potential, uh, potentially in, uh, interested for academia, for consultancies, and so on, um, can be accessed uh, through this website. Okay. Now uh, let me uh, go to another application that I would like to highlight to you. Um, it's based on, again on Europa EU website, um, uh, part of your Europe um, functionality of the website. It's access to finance. This is information about possibilities for um, for businesses to access um, loans, guarantees, and, uh, possibly also subsidized with EU budget. Um, uh, again, you can filter, you can see what are the op opportunities in your given country, because normally how it works is that uh, that uh, under financial instrument, the EU budget gives um, uh, budgetary support guarantee to activities of uh, financial uh, financial institutions like promotional banks, uh, national banks, uh, regional banks. So you can, for example, try to see um, uh, what is there in Portugal? What may be there in relevant in Portugal? Um, uh, okay, let's see. For what 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 sort of interventions I need? Do I need support to leasing? Okay, let's try to find support to digitalization. Okay, and we can see that there are two financial institutions that are currently pro can provide loans gar or guarantees under support of EU budget. Uh, to uh, to uh, businesses um, uh, to businesses uh, in the given country. Here we're talking about Portugal. Uh, again, this is a, this is something that is mostly linking with uh, with um, now Invest EU, uh, which is like a, a big financial instrument um, with its own budget. Um, uh, where the European, uh, when the European uh, Commission um, uh, agreed with um, uh, financial institutions, including European Investment Bank, but also also other banks, um, uh, to uh, facilitate fin financing to small and medium-sized uh, companies, but also types of uh, businesses under different um, types of um, uh, investment needs, like uh, infrastructure, but also improving uh, improving um, uh, improving um, uh, financing opportunities for small and medium-sized um, companies, um, uh, support to social economy, and so on. So this is an interesting, I believe, an interesting, um, uh, interesting um, portal to still uh, see from time to time. If you seek financing in the form of loans, guarantees, so not uh, so uh, reimbursable financing. Now, in order to prepare your project, sometimes you may need technical assistance. Linking to Invest EU, so linking to this big uh, financial instrument um, uh, that uh, European Commission. Uh, uh, came up with uh, together with European Investment Bank and other institutions. Um, uh, there is an advisory hub under Invest EU. So this is um, uh, this is a group of experts uh, with the European Investment Bank, but also recruited by European Investment Bank to help you with the preparation of the projects. Um, uh, 
interesting feature here is that okay, not not only do they advise on the on the um, on the um, environmental aspects of the project, um, but also uh, on the financial setup of the project. But also they can then uh, suggest uh, where to seek financing, what financial instrument uh, institutions might be, might be might be relevant. So Invest EU, it's a technical um, assistance, technical support hub. Um, it, it works on first come first um, base, uh, first come uh, first serve basis. Uh, basically, one has to uh, lodge a request uh, to the Invest EU hub, um, uh, normally via the um, uh, offices of the EIB, national um, offices of the EIB. Uh, I believe there is uh, one uh, very very strong one in in Portugal. Now. That was about uh, possibility for technical assistance and also about financing. But what might be also interesting for you is to learn about what other categories of projects and type of projects and types of interventions were there supported in the past under, uh, under different funds. Um, uh, there is uh, basically the biggest budget, the biggest program that tend to support tourism are the structural funds, so the cohesion funds, ERDF, and here with the previous additions so of the previous financing perspective, there were several, um, uh, several hundreds of projects that are indirectly linking to tourists and also sometimes indirectly, uh, that one can perhaps be inspired because one can see uh, what type of, of 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 projects and how they were structured and what sort of support um, uh, they received. Um, again, um, uh, there is um, uh, again it's it, it's a database of project with uh, with a simple filtering uh, functionality. You can either uh, look for uh, projects in specific country or under specific operational programs. Or you can you can try to uh, go uh, by team or a keyword like again we can go with tourism uh, hotels. Let's try to uh, see what we get. Yeah, and again you have an overview of different projects that were there under different operational programs of ERDF or cohesion funds um, in different countries. Some of those projects are described in, the, in more detail. Some of them are described in less detail. But in any case, that might be helpful for for um, uh, for, for inspiration and for comparing. Okay, what is possible? What was possible in the past with a different operational programs? Um, now, uh, similarly, but now for projects in the area of research, um, uh, there is Cordis database, a repository of all the projects that were financed since 1990. So this is a very big database of projects under different research and development budgets of so the framework programs in the past, framework research programs in the past, and then Horizon 2020 and currently Horizon Europe. Again, um, uh, the Cordis website allows for filtering, allows for looking for projects by with different options for filtering and uh, here in particular it's quite um, uh, quite useful tool because it also very often sends to specific deliverables of those projects so it's not only that it helps you prepare the project but also to take advantage of the of the of the of the research or or the knowledge that was generated with those projects so if you want to look for something i don't know in the area of 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 energy efficiency of hotels with the filtering you can come um, there and you can come with uh, discovered the project that were done in the past that precisely analyzed something in the area of energy efficiency with the reports, with the findings of the project. Um, that may, uh, may may help you actually do the, um, uh, the I don't know, if, you, if you're planning some, uh, some uh, investment um, in your businesses, that, uh, that the knowledge from the project might be, might be, might be helpful. Too. So that was the repository of projects. Uh, two more websites. Now, uh, European Europe Network. Uh, this is an initiative uh, specifically um, uh, prepared for the small and medium sized enterprises to help those small and medium um, uh, sized enterprises um, internationalize, uh, um, find partners abroad. 
um, also get inspiration for, for, for projects and for initiatives. It's a network um, uh, that is mostly composed of the, of the um, uh, advisory bodies, but also of uh, of uh, Chamber of Commerce across the EU member state, but also beyond. Um, uh, as said, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is as such, this website doesn't give you um, information of finance on, on available financing, but you can identify, for instance, a body in Portugal that uh, that can advise you of uh, on available funding option, depending on type of project um, uh, that there is. Normally, those um, uh, those, um, for example, Chamber of Commerces or Innovation Offices, uh, they are um, uh, they're they're unmandated with provided this sort of information, and they normally should be um, uh, one of the first entry points for you when you discussing when you want to discuss how to finance your project. And last but not least, just just to mention briefly, there's an initiative uh, for cluster cooperation. So um, cluster again, those are um, those are um, uh, those are um, uh, uh, often hybrid structures uh, where you have cooperation of uh, of uh, similar type companies um, uh, in a given region. Um, uh, where you have shared the same objective or you're working on something together. There are clusters, uh, several clusters on tourism across Europe. And uh, with the European Cluster Collaboration Platform, this, this tool facilitates cooperation of different clusters between themselves. So uh, setting up relation, uh, jointly working on projects. Um, I don't know, cluster tourist cluster in Romania with tourist cluster in, in Portugal and so on. So again, uh, it's a website that can help you finding another clusters, uh, identifying perhaps partner for the clusters that you would like to uh, set up yourself and so on. So that would be the overview now of uh, all the initiatives that I think are mostly relevant for, 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 for SMEs uh, in tourism. Um, again, it's probably not exhaustive, uh, and uh, and um, and I'm sure that I I, I did not uh, answer to all your questions. So perhaps now let's switch to uh, the questions that may be coming from you. I'm very happy to answer them. I will disconnect my uh, my screen so that I can see you. Yeah, I think I think the, the thank you so much for the, the what you said about the guide. Uh, it was important for me. Uh, at least I tried to understand a little bit more. Uh, even so, I think that we will speak later about it and try to find other ways to help our uh, enterprises. Luis, I don't know if you uh, saw the questions made. I know that uh, there are a few. Yes. Some of yeah. them are more simple than others. I don't know if you want to start and to help well, us. I, thank you, Milos. Uh, I will now gather the information in Portuguese and then I will pass to the in English. That's from the first part is the housekeeping um, question. So, portanto, relativamente há aqui uma questão sobre se a sessão será gravada e disponibilizada assim, será a nossa ideia colocá-la depois disponibilizá-la no portal. Um, uma pergunta, um, uh, e as, as questões seguintes, há uma pergunta sobre os, os links quebrados, um, e essa informação nós vamos agregar e passar à comissão para, para ela melhorar a... a a qualidade da informação às vezes pode ser uma gralha no próprio desenho do, do portal e, da, 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 e do, dos sites. Portanto, as informações que vocês tenham sobre os links quebrados podem enviar que nós transmitimos e à, à comissão. Não, Milos. Uh, so, housekeeping... I will start with the housekeeping question. Um, this one I made you a lot of times, but since I have it, I will transmit. Is the guide available in other languages that, rather than e English? Um, and I have two more uh, questions. It is the, um, one of them, I know the answer, but I will ask to you, is the difference between the Brussels management, managed programs and national or joint uh, management um, national envelopes. It is the national website linked for, uh, there is a national, national link uh, within the EU funding uh, guide, meaning 
if there is any plan for the Commission to step um, in the, the possibility to have the um, structural funds and the, the investment funds and social European funds within the, 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 the guide. And the last question that we have it, it is, there is a possibility to have further filters within the guide. For instance, if a SME doesn't want to have a cross-border, um, <clears throat> doesn't have the possibility to have a cross-border uh, cooperation with other enterprises, or they, it is possible to have that kind of filter that can deepen the, the process of searching? Those were the questions. Thank you. Uh, let me start. Uh, let me start with the easy one. Uh, the the other languages. Um, yes, there is a functionality of uh, seeing the guide in other languages. We use the automatic translation for that, so it perhaps may not be the most optimal. But normally, we check for 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 most of the languages. Um, it's perfectly understandable the outcome. So yes, um, other languages absolutely. Now on uh, on uh, on the uh, programs that are not centrally managed, indeed the guide uh, refers to those programs like ERDF is there, cohesion fund is there, but again further information on this and it explains um, the logic of the program against gives uh, types of projects and sends further to the specific website of the um, uh, of the of the programs through which you will be able then to get information like I can see in the chat, um, the link to the managing authorities and so on. All that information should be normally available by the website that is, uh, is, is, is maintained by our colleagues in DG Regio, specifying everything on the, on the cohesion fund, uh, structural funds. And, and then normally those uh, websites also give reference or further can send you to the operational programs that are adopted. So you get all the further information that are uh, that are needed. Uh, uh, again, uh, those types of programs are are being uh, done together with the member state administration. It's the programming of the member state of the regions. So the information gradually appears about, for example, the specific um, operational programs when they are adopted. So that when they are submitted by the by the by the by the regions member state, and when then they are finally approved. OK, now the further filtering. Yes, absolutely. We um, uh, we we can change the website and we can amend the website and this 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 feedback and I, I, I take this from the chat as well. So the specific request, uh, it, it's a good point. OK, uh, why do I have to go to see all the website if I already know that I am I, not interested, I cannot uh, work uh, transnationally. Yes, that's something something for improvement. Um, we we did quite um, quite an improvement of, of the tool already in in uh, December, so I don't think that we will be changing the, the structure uh, in the coming weeks, but but for sure in in the in the months to come, we'll be thinking how to further improve the functionalities and any feedback, any feedback coming coming from the users and you are the users um, is very precious to us. Huh? I think that uh, we gave a web, uh, we gave a um, uh, functional mailbox um, on 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 the tool itself. If you have ideas or if something is not working fine, please drop us a line uh, using that 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 email address or even using my email address. Uh, so I will pass to the team. Okay, Mamad, okay. is it possible for you to write uh, the email uh, or your email or the mail or the mail email here on the, on the chat so that people mm -hmm. can see it and use it? Okay, I think it will be easier for everybody. I was also trying to see if the, if there is a, if there is any questions. That you want to ask us first, you can ask us and uh, the companies to petition Portugal, and then we will forward it to you. Okay, also. So there's no worries. We we have we also have our primary extendimento or, or, or program empresario that it can use as a channel to answer the questions. Okay, your email and the other one. My email, and I will send the functional one as well. Okay. Luis. I don't know if there's any other questions that you there, have. There is, there is another question that appears now. Uh, it, is kind of, it is quite a good question. Are those programs, uh, those supporting programs, exclusive, exclusively for SMEs? There is a possibility that were medium or mid cap or even a large company uh, that is focused or wants to get into the tourism sector. Uh, this is the tool where they can search some funding opportunities. 
if it's exclusive to SMEs, no. Uh, some of the programs are are often uh, open to big companies as well. And and even if you look at the again biggest donor of the of the of the funds to tourism or the biggest supporter, the structural funds, um, uh, there you can see uh, some interventions uh, that uh, where 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 big companies received uh, received support to their projects. Um, Luis, I did not get the second question that you had. So if you could repeat. Sorry, I had, I had a, um, a broken connection. Uh, uh, the question was if the programs were so uh, only to SMEs. Uh, ah, yeah. That so, you already so, answered. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, okay. We show. I don't think that from our side there's another questions. I don't see it any. Uh, people are so we have here two emails. So if people want to send the, those two emails with ideas and questions that they have. I'm sure that the EU or the Commission will gladly uh, answer it. Um, I'm just going to change now for uh, Portuguese just to close. Okay, and I'll get and I'll get, get back to you. Antes de mais, só queria agradecer a participação. Temos mais aqui de 170 pessoas, por nós importantíssima. São está gravada. Portanto, ela vai ficar disponível no nosso no nosso no nosso portal no business.tudo.pt. Não vocês poderão ver outra vez a apresentação e se calhar ter um melhor ideia daquilo que foi apresentado. Vamos eventualmente no futuro com a nossa equipa que temos em Bruxelas fazer mais ações destas sobre temas que sejam do interesse para o turismo. Existe ali um mundo muito grande de informação que nós precisamos conhecer. É um facto que nós muitas vezes olhamos para nós e trabalhamos com aquilo que temos e focamos muito nos nossos, nos nossos instrumentos, mas existe uma panóplia deles muito grandes que têm que ser aproveitadas. O facto de nós estarmos na, na Ponta ao oeste da Europa, que não é desculpa para nós não, nos, não termos mais uma ação mais forte dentro de, destes fundos. Uh, por vezes é preciso a massa crítica, uh, ter mais uh, dimensão, digamos assim. Portanto, isso é um problema que nós no setor temos, é temos que trabalhar nisso também que no futuro. Nós instrumentos irão aparecer em este ano que serão criticados essa temática, a questão da massa crítica, da própria internacionalização que iremos eventualmente usar não só os nossos fundos, como também aqueles que a própria EU tiver também disponível. Um, quero agradecer aqui para todos, quando só houver questões que vocês que querem colocar, têm ali os dois e-mails, ou podem enviar para o nosso apoio ao empresário, que também nós tentaremos que dar a resposta, e portanto, o mais para ser possível. Milos, I sent, uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm sure that we will speak uh, sooner than a little later, ok? About this. Uh, maybe we can do other type of uh, events like this in the near future. Um, hope that you enjoy and probably we'll do it here, okay, because it's sunny. And in Brussels it's all snowing, okay, so I think it will be better. Raining, to do it here, raining, okay? raining. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. I'm going to send uh, my slides um, to Luis for further distribution, okay? Okay, thanks so much. Luis, thank you very again. much. Good afternoon, well, everyone. Enough. Thanks so much. Enjoy. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye, Bye Miller. Bye, no. This was better.